Hi everyone, I'm Jenna and in today's video I will be attempting to do my very first ever 24 hour readathon and I'm very very excited to be doing this type of video but also slightly nervous because I've never done one of these before but I've always wanted to do one of these videos and just for whatever reason haven't filmed one but at the beginning of this week, Jesse from the channel Jesse the Reader, he made a video all about his attempt to do a 20 hour readathon and it inspired me to do one. And since I have a three day weekend where I'm off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I figured it'd be the perfect time to attempt to do a 24 hour readathon. And yeah, let's just jump into the books I'll be attempting to read for this 24 hour readathon. Now the first book that I want to start reading for this 24 hour readathon is a book that I talked about many times recently on this channel and it's one that I've started but put down and haven't finished it. And I said multiple times that I wanted to get to it after the book that I was currently reading, which was The Last Magician. And I'm happy to report that I finished that book. So now I can jump right into The City We Become by N.K. Jemisin. And for this, I only have 262 pages left of this to read. So I am pretty confident that this will be a manageable amount to read and get through for this readathon. Then after finishing that book, the book I want to get to is Sourdough or Lois and Her Ventures in the Underground Market, a novel by Robin Salone. And he's the author of Mr. Penumbra's 24 Hour Bookstore, which is a adult novel. And I remember really loving that when I read it years back and I said to his new novel which is all about Lois and she is a software engineer and she really knows nothing about bread making. That is until the neighborhood hole in the wall restaurant closes because the owner's visa has expired and because of that they give her the sourdough bread starter and I tell her that she needs to take care of it and she does and she finds out that she loves baking bread and then soon they're telling her that she should sell her bread at the farmer's market but to be able to sell something at the farmer's market she has to go through this jury that basically determines who sells what in the market. And I'm excited to see if she get there and sell her bread at the farmer's market. I'm excited for this because I never really read anything about bread making and it just sounds like it'd be a cool story. And this is only 259 pages, less than 300, so it seemed like a good option for this readathon. Now the next book that I want to read is a book that has to do with poetry and it came out earlier this week on the 23rd and that book is The Truth of You, Poetry and Love, Life and Joy and Sadness by Ian S. Thomas and he is my favorite poetry writer and I'm so glad that I have this book in my hands and I chose it for this readathon because I think poetry is one of those things that you can read fast and yeah I'm excited to get to this and this is split up into five parts and so I think I'm going to be and once in a while I'll be reading a part from this book throughout the 24 hours and when I'm done reading like one section of this book I'll be reading to you my favorite poems from that section. So these are all the three books that I plan to read with 24 hour readathon which I am going to start at noon today which is in about like 10 minutes so it's coming up shortly 
hope I get to all these books if everything goes according to plan. But will things actually go according to plan? Stay tuned. And the readathon will be happening in five, four, three, two, one. Let the 24 hour readathon begin. So freaking excited for it. So, update time. So, as you can see, button decent chunk of the way through this, and things are happening. Just in chapter where, hold on, I think, uh, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, to represent those boroughs, have found the Bronx. So, as you know, there are five boroughs, and that's only four of them. And previous to this, we uh, found that I'm gonna say his name wrong, but I think it's uh, Seo Paulo, something like that. And he has decided to go to Staten Island to basically find the lady or woman or whatever that is there. It's supposed to be the protector of Staten Island. So I'm really excited to keep reading and see where this story goes and what happens when all five boroughs and this guy that's supposed to be in the environment of New York come together. Wait for that. And it is, let me get my phone over here, about 4.20. And yeah, so I've been waiting for quite a bit. Um, take it in the next, hopefully, couple hours. Get back to you guys with an update when I have stuff to say and stuff that's interesting. So until then. So time for another update. So you probably have known that at the beginning of this book, I was very much confused about what was going on and I think that is done purposefully so that when each of these birds comes together you're getting a little more knowledge about what's going on. We've got two new characters. we got one that is Hong and the other one we talked about before which is Seo Paulo, something like that. And they're from outside New York, from other cities, and they're here just to help out because they know about the birthing of cities and all that, and so I'm liking that. And we also found out that, through them, that Sand Island has been not wanting to connect with the other boroughs, and they need to, like, stop that. Plus, they also need to find the person that is, like, the embodiment of all of New York that can really, really help them out. And at this point, we are almost certain that we know exactly where he is. And hopefully, when they go there, they can wake him up out of his like, sort of coma thing that they think he's in. And hopefully they can do that without the last borough of Staten Island. But we shall see the first set of poems in the truth of you haunts about love, life, joy, and sadness. And I'm going to be reading those. And then I'll report back to you guys on the ones that I think are my favorite out of the first part. Okay, so I just read the first section of poems from the truth of you. And the first section is entitled, In Which We Fall in Love. And the first poem is entitled, An Admission. Be honest and tell them what hurts, because if you don't, you'll never be happy. And the next poem 
is entitled The Tree Growing Where It Can't. The sunlight says sometimes you fall in love, like snow falls at night, quietly and gently, covering every part of you, and the next day the world looks completely different. And that is how I fall in love, like snow. And the next one is entitled A Single Beat of a Bird's Heart. Do not say, I love you. If you mean, you make my life easy. Because love is only ever easy in the beginning. And from then on, if it's worth it, it needs work. So don't go into love thinking it will be easy. Go into love thinking it will be worth the work. The next one is entitled, A Sudden Silence. Maybe your heart has heard the same thing for so long. When it hears a voice telling something else, it is impossible. It is afraid. And the next and last one is entitled, A Child Collecting Leaves. I asked you what you missed the most and you told me you missed the ocean. So I filled every room in the house with seashells until at night you could hear a thousand waves whispering you to sleep. I asked you what you missed, and you told me you missed the forest. So I filled the house with pine needles until at night when you closed your eyes you could smell a giant forest all around you. I asked you what you missed, and you told me you missed the stars. So I took a screwdriver and made a thousand holes in the roof. I asked you what you missed, and you told me you missed kissing. And so I kissed you, and I kissed you, and I kissed you. I kissed you in spring, summer, autumn, winter. I kissed you by the sea, and in the forest, and under the stars. Because when I kiss you, in those moments, neither of us missed anything at all. Hi everyone. It is currently 8.30 in the morning and I realized that I didn't film an update for you guys last night before I went to bed and I figured I would do that now before I get into more reading before it hits noon today. And the book that I was currently reading is The City We Would Come by N.K. Jemison. And this book, I'm happy to report that I finished it. And I believe it was around midnight when I finished this book. And I have to say that overall, I liked it. I just didn't love it. And I'm kind of sad about that. But it was a really good story and wrapped up at the end, except we left it a little bit open for another book, which I know we're going to get. Also, the one character in this book, I'm not going to say who she is, but you think she's supposed to be and just like this ordinary person, but then she turns out to not be it. And there were clues that indicated that she wasn't and I didn't pick up on that. Like there's one that was like so obvious. And it just was like, why didn't I see that? She's special. Like, ugh. I was like so mad at myself when it was revealed. I was like, ugh, there were signs. Why didn't I see it? So if you remember, I didn't read this whole book for the rethon. I just had to read the last 262 pages of that, which I'm happy that I finished. Sourdough or Lois and Her Adventures in the Underground Market by Robin Sloan. And this book I actually listened to on audiobook while I read along. And I'm glad I did that because late night I just needed a different way to do this and I really loved it. I got to page 44 and I'm loving it so far. Really intriguing and I can't wait to continue on. And then the 30 minutes before 2 a.m. I decided to put down sourdough and pick up the poetry collection and read the next two sections of it. And the first question is 
the truth of you and I'm going to read to you again the poems in those two sections that I thought were amazing. So the first section is entitled In Which One of Us Leaves and the first poem is entitled A Shadow in a Frame. I love you. I love you as much as I have ever loved you and some part of me will never ever stop loving you. But there is another part of me that feels like we're trying to go somewhere where we'll both be happy and that we're both always trying to get there and we're always trying really, really, really hard. But I don't know if I'll ever get there. I feel like we'll always just be trying and I'm tired. I need to know if you're tired too. This doesn't mean I don't love you. It means I love you enough to tell you I don't know if I can try anymore. And the next one is entitled, A Path Across a Field. I tried to write you out of me. I tried to cut you out the way you cut me out. And nothing worked. And now all I can do, line by line, is write myself out of me. And the next one is entitled, A Door Slammed Off Its Hinges. Maybe you're a sad mess, and I'm a sad mess too. And maybe right now, this is just who we are. Maybe that's all we can be, and all we can be right now, and maybe that can be enough. And the next one is entitled, A Broken Road Stretching Into the Distance. I'm not saying you didn't hurt me. I'm saying there's a part of me that's willing to risk being hurt again, just not by you. I don't think that's being strong. I just think I'm carrying on. The next one is entitled, A Ticket to Anywhere Else. Some of us need to love deeply and earnestly. Some of us need to feel like love. It's painful in order to know that it is love. Some of us just want to be in the same room as someone else. The question is not, is there love enough for me? The question is, is your love enough for you? Then the next one is called a key loss in a field. Unless you're willing to let someone else hold your hand in the dark and guide you out of yourself, you'll never be able to truly love or be loved by anyone. The next one is entitled A Sunset in a Foreign Country. I always thought that we were meant to change together, that some of our seasons would line up, that your spring and your summer would become mine that we would share an autumn and that I would be with you until the end of winter. But everything changed and it changed without me. And the last one in section three that I want to share with you guys is entitled, A Day in Bed. It is the silly conversations, it is the unspoken things, the glance across the room, the subtle nod of a head, the touch of their hand against yours. These are the things that I miss the most. Nothing is silly or small in the end. Now on to part four, which is called In Which We Find Each Other Again. The first poem I want to read you is entitled A Hand Made of Water. We don't know if something is meant to be. All we can do is try because if we do not try, then that is not life. And so we must try. And the last one in section four is entitled, A Necklace Your Mother Gave You. The only way to truly love someone is to love them like you've never loved anyone else in your life. Or at least try. Or just pretend. All right, so as you can see, I am back in my regular filming spot because I have finished the 24-hour readathon and I'm so excited that I managed to do this readathon one but also read as much as I did so let's get into what I read for the rest of the morning so I am going to start reading more of sourdough and this book I managed to read up until page 201. And then I stopped reading because I only had 30 minutes before 
noon to be something and I knew that I wasn't going to get to the last like 56 or 59 pages of this book in that time so I decided to read the last section of poems in The Truth of You and as per usual I'm going to be reading my favorite ones out of that last section for you guys. And that section is called In Which We Hope. And the first poem I want to read is entitled A Brief Reminder. There will be a day after. There will be a day when you wake up and your first thought isn't about this. There will be a day when you open the door and you walk out without once worrying about this. There will be a day when the things you think about the most is completely and utterly unrelated to this. There will be a day after this one and the luckiest among us will notice it for what it is. Then the next one is entitled, A Closed Blind. People fuck us up and it is up to us to find the way back to ourselves and you owe it to yourself to walk. The next one is entitled, A Good Lie, The Only One. Even if it's not true, you hold their hand and you look them in the eyes and you say, it's all going to be okay. Because we all need that when we're small. And the next one is called, a rhyme and a reason. When you look at me and think that I'm not trying, that is when I am trying my hardest. Then the next one is entitled, A Conversation with Self. I forgive you. I forgive you for needing help. I forgive you for not always being 100%. I forgive you for not being perfect at everything and for not being further along than you wanted to be. I forgive you for feeling insecure about whether or not you ever, quote, make it. And even if you don't, even if your entire life sometimes feels like one big colossal failure, I forgive you for that too. I forgive you for being human. And the next one is entitled, A Traffic Light in the Rain. Pain travels until it reaches a person who can look at it and say, No further. What was done to you, you did to me, but I will not do it to someone else. And these people are the reason the world is infinitely better than it should be. Then you have a little bit of a longer one, and it's called A Cloud in Front of the Moon. There's this idea that we are on a journey in our lives, and in that journey there is a star that we must follow but you will not follow one star your whole life. There will always be a part of yourself that says, no, we decided on this star. We've invested so much of ourselves. We must follow it wherever it goes. And another part of you will say, this just isn't working anymore. Now that I'm here, I don't know if here is right. Changing your mind is okay. Changing who you are is okay. Changing where you want to go and who you want to be is a fundamental, important part of life. A good life is about finding the next star and understanding that each morning you need to wake up and ask yourself, which star do I need to follow today? Hope you preserve when you must, but also always find the courage to change course when you need to in your life. You will travel a long distance and you will follow many stars along the way. May they all guide you to who you were meant to be. So yeah, hope you liked me reading my favorite poems from each of the different sections from this book. Hope you found some poems that you like from this and I would highly recommend checking all of Ian S. Thompson's works out because they are magnificent. And so to wrap this all up, I'm going to tell you how many pages I managed to read in total for this 24-hour readathon. So 
for the city we come I had to read the last 262 pages which I did then I read the entirety of the truth of you which is 231 pages and then I read the majority of sourdough I got to page 201 and if we combine all the pages together we get a grand total of 694 pages which it just blows my mind that is freaking awesome I still would have really liked to have finished sourdough and then I would have gone to everything I wanted to get to but for my first readathon I'm happy that I got as far as I did in it that runs out this video for today I really hope you liked this vlog style of me vlogging my 25 readathon and I will see you soon for a new one bye